the last stream, we were working on finally getting a basic refined storage system up and running. We now have the refined storage controller, the crafting grid, and the disk drive, all of which are currently offline due to the fact that there is no call inside of the pitiful generator here. But if we fill that up, we can now see that all of our items and all of our blocks are safely stored inside this crafting grid. And more importantly, they're accessible for us to craft with, which is hopefully gonna make our crafting so much easier going forward. No more do we have to go through individual chests, looking for individual items, grabbing all the things we need, bringing them all together into a crafting table. We can just do everything from within the refined storage crafting grid. Now, between streams, as per usual, the pack has updated. So uh, if we check on in here, you'll see the shop has quite a few new items. We also have a couple of new quests up at the top here. In the starting up quest, there is now a quest for a handheld crafting table, uh, which would have been nice for us to have earlier in the pack. It also might not be a bad idea for us to carry one of these around just in case we want to do some crafting while we're out and about. Essentially, as the name suggests, this is just a regular Minecraft crafting table on a stick. So while we're out, we can just grab this, right click, and we can craft, which is pretty nifty. I feel like we should have one of those in our backpack at all times, just in case we fancy doing a little bit of crafting whilst we're away from our crafting grid. If we check out the wooden tech chapter here, we have, I think, a few new quests up here. We have one for a bed roll, which I think is maybe kind of like a sleeping bag in that I'm assuming it allows you to sleep wherever you like. Unfortunately, we don't currently have the leather for that. It's possible we might have a little bit of leather down in our strainer here. We don't, unfortunately. That's fine, I think. I don't necessarily think we need that just yet. Although, if we are going to do some exploration, it might not be a bad idea to take some kind of bedroll with us just in case we need to sleep. Um, although, to be fair, I think it's unlikely that uh, something like the phantoms are going to be a problem for us if we are exploring underwater. Now, speaking of exploring underwater, one of the things that has been added to the shop down here is this guy right here, the sea moth, which... For those who don't know, is a vehicle. Oh my goodness, that is uh, somebody who has defeated the end dragon. GG. <laughs> that sound always scares me every time I'm on the server. Essentially, for those who don't know, this is a vehicle from the game Subnautica, which is an underwater uh, survival game. And I believe that a mod here has added it to Minecraft. And so if I'm not mistaken, we can buy this from the store for 50 C bucks, it is rather expensive. And I don't know if we can put it down in here. Oh, we totally can. Look at this. So this is a vehicle that I believe we can use to navigate under the sea. And I think, I've not tested it, but I think we should also be able to maybe use this without having to come back up for air as well. Maybe. It does require a power cell. Uh, the power cell is makeable. It's this guy right here. Um, it is four copper, one silver, and two titanium. You can also buy it from the store down here for 20 C bucks. Although, to be honest, the power cell seems fairly reasonably priced. It seems like an easy enough craft. I am being told in the game chat here that I need a diving mask. Interesting. That also doesn't seem too bad. Two titanium and three fiber mesh. You can make fiber mesh from kelp. Kelp we currently don't have. We can get it with water essence and nature essence, although, and these are makeable using mystical agriculture. In fact, there is a, a whole quest line uh, further up here that we've kind of glossed over, dedicated to mystical seeds. And I believe one of the quests here uh, has things like water, earth, fire, and air essence, and uh, we'll probably have other essences further on down the line. We'll try without the diving mask. If it's not good, then maybe we can come back and look at making that as well. Um, although that seems maybe a bit out of our price range at the moment. As far as those power cells go, I think the only thing that we're missing to make these are the titanium ingots. Thankfully, uh, these can be acquired by smelting titanium dust in the induction smelter and titanium dust we can get 
from Sifting Gravel. Oh, it has to be in a netherite mesh though. Ooh, so maybe we can't afford to make these just yet. And in fact, it looks like we might have to purchase that from the store. Sure. Submit and boom. Okay, so how do I install this? Do I do it in here? I do. Okay, so that goes in. And then presumably I have to be like in the water for this to actually work. So let's try picking this up. And let's try dropping that down in the sea. So if I, I'm gonna go to the surface here. Oh no, we just put it down, I guess. Okay, there we go. So let's see, if I put this in. Oh yeah, look at that. So we are still, oh, that's not how you descend. I tried using shift to descend there. So we do still um, obviously suffocate, which is less than ideal. Um, also, is that sinking? I guess we could, if we wanted to though, take um, some of those portions of water breathing with us. Oh yeah, look at this. You can just point down and just go, oh, this is cool, chat. This is cool. Look at that. Kind of like the, fir the third person view there. Can we go to the surface with this thing? Oh, we can actually. Oh no, no, please descend. We had a bit too much, um, a bit too much momentum there. So we could go and make a couple of water breathing potions, which I think I showed previously. They're basically an advanced version of the, uh, the bowls of water that we had before. Yeah, they're made with four fish, four bowls of water, and one bottle of water. And then each one gives you three minutes of water breathing. We do have a fair bit of fish in here. I don't know if you can mix and match those fish. I assume you probably can. So I assume that the, uh, the puffer fish would go in there as well. So presumably we could make two water breathing potions here. We just need uh, eight bowls of water and two water bottles. And two. Okay, cool. So we got two potions of water breathing. We've not done too much exploration just yet. I don't know if there's a lot beneath us, honestly. It kind of looks like it just goes straight down into nothingness, but we could kind of swim out in uh, one of the many directions around us and kind of see if we spot anything underwater that we could, uh, we could grab. I think the problem that I've run into here is that my base was generated before some of the new underwater stuff was added. And so... Um, I think if we go and kind of load in some new chunks, we might start to see some of the newer stuff that's been added in uh, in newer versions of the pack. My first question though is how quickly does the uh, the old Seamoth here deteriorate its battery? The answer would appear to be fairly slowly. So I'm kind of thinking, can we swim? Like, can we go on the surface here just like this? I kind of want to just hover up I want to kind of just swim on the surface. We swapped out to a boat to try and save battery on the uh, on the sea moth. And also you can't really swim along the surface. Oh, hello. You can't really swim along the surface on the, uh, on the sea moth either. So I figured we'd use a boat to get like kind of from place to place. And then once we got, you know, to a place like this, we could then get in the sea moth and, uh, and go right down as well. Okay, so we can't climb up this. Otherwise we're going to get hit with the, uh, the toxic air. This is, however, Free bone, right? Like that's so much bone meal right there, which is gonna be super useful if we ever start doing any like uh, any farming. And I guess we can really just tear the whole thing down. Now it's quite possible. We didn't upgrade our <laughs> sword, which was maybe a mistake. Um, so it's, it's quite possible things could go badly for us here, but chat is telling me there could be mobs in here and I do hear zombies already. Let's, um, I kind of don't want to use the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the water breathing potion, but I feel like we probably should, right? Let me grab more of these bones. And also we can actually put like a waypoint down here so we could come back as well. If we hit J and then go waypoints, new, and we'll just like burn skeleton. Make that, uh, white and save. So now whenever we press J, we can see that in relation to our base over here and we could make our way over here in the future. I think we can probably risk going down here. Let's take the potion. Three minutes is quite a while and we are probably gonna head down to that other area as well. I kind of, I see spawners underneath. Chat did recommend, oh, hello. I'll take the free emeralds. I would very much like to not die though to the zombies. Chat did recommend that I bring cardboard boxes with me and being the fool that I am, I didn't bring any. So I, unfortunately, I don't have like a cardboard box ready to steal one of these spawners, which would have been quite useful here. The fact that we can uh, kind of keep them a bit with our, uh, with the water though is quite useful. So let's drop the Seamoth down. 
And let's go see if we can't get something down here. We do still have two and a half minutes left on our water breathing. And we could get more as well, if needs be. And we've got another three minutes available to us. Okay, so there are bad guys down here. I'm really looking to see if there are uh, chests of some description. I don't see a chest in there. I'm kind of wondering what we would, uh, what it is we could get from here. Uh, although I do think I see a chest, yeah, right at the bottom over there. So let me, also, I don't know if they can do damage to me in the Seamoth. They definitely can, okay. Note, note taken, note to self. Right down to the sea floor here, you do start to get mining fatigue. I think if I go a bit lower here, we'll see that we do get, uh, we do get mining fatigue added to us right here. I don't know how low down you get that mining fatigue because I was hoping I could kind of break into uh, this sphere here. Oh, hello. Okay. I don't know if any of that is, is particularly useful. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Get me out of here. Okay, my water breathing is gone. We have, however, managed to safely get away from uh, from the brink of death there, which is good. Okay, someone told me to look into the mouth of this uh, this beast here. Oh, yeah, look at that. We do still have to go back and get our, our sea moth, which is right at the bottom of the world now. Oh, there is a spawner in there. What kind of spawner is that? Oh, hello. Don't mind if I do. We got four blocks of emerald though. We got uh, 38 emeralds from this uh, excursion here, chat. We've not quite yet succeeded in escaping, honestly, because we still have to go down and get the sea moth. So I think I am gonna have to consume this other potion of water breathing and then swim down and try and get that back. There's also something over there as well, it's like a little hut. So I think what we'll do is we'll drop down. We will grab our sea moth there doesn't seem to be too much useful in here. Like we could maybe come back and get the spawners in the future if we wanted those. But in terms of stuff inside the chests, it doesn't seem particularly great. And I think we'll head on over in this direction to see what's over in this thing. Okay, what we got down here? More emeralds, some wheat. I do see a, a zombie trying to get to me there. There's also a magma block, which actually might not be a bad... Oh no, oh that's the mining fatigue getting in, I see. Can I Can I break that above the mining fatigue level and then steal that and then not get killed by this baby zombie and then get back in my seamoth and, and run away? We definitely can. Alright. Chet. I think that was a good first excursion into the uh, the world or into the ocean of Seopolis. I think we'll head back and do a little bit of, uh, of base work and automation. And I think before we come out again, we should definitely look at getting some better weaponry and maybe some better armor as well. Both of those seem like they would help us tremendously in uh, in navigating some of these more dangerous areas. So back at home, we did get a gold helmet. We might as well throw that on for the smallest bit of protection. We also got the Frostwalker 1 and Backstabbing 3 enchantment books. Okay, let's go ahead and fill this up. Now that we have that, we'll dump most of this stuff away, I think, in here for now. That bone meal is definitely going to come in useful later on down the line. Um, I do think we'll probably keep the Seamoth in our backpack, again, just in case we're out and about. I'll do the same with the boat as well, uh, just in case we find ourselves in a bit of a sticky situation and need to get out of there quickly. But uh, back here at home, what I want to work on, at least to start with today, is I'd like to start working on a better source of power. So between streams, I have gone ahead and processed a bunch of materials. I've just dropped a bunch of stuff into the smeltery and pulled all of it out in either block or ingot form, just to save us from having to do too much smelting in today's stream. So I'm thinking power-wise that uh, to start with here, I might go ahead and set up a magmatic dynamo from thermal expansion. And that's a generator that's going to use the lava that we can produce uh, and turn that into redstone flux that our machines can use for power. Uh, you might be thinking, Isaac, you already have a magma generator over here. You got it as a quest reward from a, a previous quest. And you are correct. We do have a magma generator right here from Industrial Foregoing. The trouble with this generator is that I believe it maxes out 
at 50, Redstone Flux per tick or 50 FE per tick, which is not particularly high. Whereas the Magmatic Dynamo from Thermal Expansion can be used uh, in a similar way to our Induction Furnace, that being that we can put in upgrades such as the hardened integral components uh, as well as dynamo specific augments that would increase the amount of power it produces um, while at the same time increasing the amount of lava that it consumes as well so while this guy is okay as an early game power source i think as we move into the mid game we're going to prefer to have something like the magmatic dynamo which is going to allow us to uh, to upgrade it and generate more power as we need it so to make the dynamo here, it's actually not too bad. It's uh, one invar gear, two invar ingots, two iron ingots, one redstone dust, and then one redstone flux coil. Uh, the only thing that I think we are missing there is the redstone flux coil. And I think to save some time, I might go ahead and make a few of those right out of the gate here because I have a feeling we're going to need quite a few of them in today's stream. So back over by our induction smelter, if we just drop in uh, some iron, some copper and some redstone we should get quite a few of these red alloy ingots and then from there if we just go and drop a little bit of gold into the smeltery we should be able to make quite a few of these uh, coils fairly quickly so not too long later we have 12 red alloy ingots as well as 12 gold in the uh, smeltery it is two gold per coil so we're only going to be able to do six of these however if we just drop those in and turn that on and that should auto produce those coils for us now in terms of generating enough lava to actually feed the magmatic generator especially as we start to add more and more upgrades to it we're going to want to tweak our current lava making setup so right now our fired crucible is set on top of lava and that's being used to make more lava as we pipe in crushed diorite however we do now have a much more efficient way of making lava not only has there been an update to the pack that has added better blocks that we can place under the crucible um, for example we now have things like this uranium block here that uh, has a 100x modifier so it's twice as fast as lava and also has no chance whatsoever of burning down the base especially the base that is made of wood and so i think what we should probably do is grab some of the uranium that we currently have in our system uh, this, by the way, we're getting from sifting overworld matter now that we have the diamond mesh in our heavy sieve. If we take this and drop it in the smeltery over here, I think we'll maybe try and go for 27 ingots, which is at three blocks. So we'll do 14. That's going to get us 28 uh, ingots worth, which is three blocks and one ingot. And we can use those three blocks underneath three crucibles to try and make a very large amount of lava, hopefully fairly quickly. On top of the fact that we're able to smelt things faster in the fired crucible, in the last stream we unlocked the, or we began automating the production of netherrack. And so now what we can do instead of relying on diorite, andesite, and granite, we can instead take the netherrack, crush that down into crushed netherrack, and we can use this to make lava instead of that granite and diorite because this produces 250 millibuckets per block, whereas the granite, diorite, and andesite only produced 100 millibuckets. So not only do we get 2.5 times as much lava from using crushed netherrack, which we have, uh, I think, 2,048 of, or we can make 2,048 of, given the amount of netherrack that we have, but we can also make it twice as fast by using the uranium instead of lava under our crucible. So generating the lava really shouldn't be a problem for us here. If we head on background, we should now have everything that it takes to make our first magmatic dynamo. We could make more if we wanted to, but again, I think for now, one is going to do just fine. Let's also head back around to here. Uh, quickly turn that off there and we'll replace the ingot cast. And then uh, we should have three blocks worth of uranium. Let's turn you on and also pull that one kind of rogue ingot out there. And I think I am going to remove this setup here. I think we're going to basically get rid of this system and probably move our lava production system and also our power production system over to this side of the base i'm thinking that we'll probably also move this uh, waterlogged sieve that we have down here and use this space as a space to uh, to produce lava and use that lava to generate power because we already have of course this uh, auto hammer set up previously this was used to crush diorite however uh, of course now what we can do is we can head on over 
to the logistical sorter that is down here and we can add a new filter. I think magenta is the color that we're sending diorite to. So we want to send crushed netherrack to that same filter. And by crushed netherrack, I of course mean regular uncrushed netherrack. So let me remove that and try that again. Netherrack and click and drag, save and done. So that should begin sending the netherrack over. And then instead of just uh, sending it back to be transported over to the crucible, we're probably going to remove the extraction pipes. In this case, those would be these hoppers. And we'll use some other kind of pipe to move the, uh, the crushed netherrack into the new crucibles that we're going to make. So two more fired crucibles later. That takes us to the three that we're going to work on. Um, however, I do want to take a quick detour. And that detour is because of the fact that, uh, yet again, the Twitch chat is shouting at me to eat, which is a fair thing to shout. Um, however, if we scroll on back up in one of these quest lines, I think it might be Iron Sibbing. There is a quest to make an upgrade base. In fact, I think this is the last quest inside of the Iron Sibbing quest line. This is used to make various upgrades for our backpack. So let's have a look here. Upgrade base. To make this, we need one leather, four string, and four iron, which we do have. And that should be that chapter, I think, basically complete. Oh, no, they've added... Oh, interesting. So the crafting calculator mod has been added to the pack. This is a nifty little... Uh, nifty little item we would need some kind of black dye to make this work and right now i unfortunately don't think we have what it takes to make this we don't have an ink sack right oh we do never mind beautiful boom and boom so uh this is interesting you can use this to kind of calculate large crafts so if you wanted to make something that required like a bunch of smaller items you can use this to find out like what base items you need for example you know if i wanted to find out all of the items required to make a dynamo and um, you could put in all of the recipes and it would tell you you know you need so much iron so much redstone obviously invar is made from iron and nickel so it'll tell you how much nickel you need and how much iron you need the flux coil is made from red alley ingots which are made from copper redstone iron so it'll tell you all the base components that you need for a certain number of magmatic dynamos we might end up using this at, uh, at some point in the future for now though we'll drop that back in there and uh, back down here with the upgrade base one really nifty thing that i wasn't aware about with the backpack is that you can upgrade it. There's an upgrade slot on the left-hand side. And if we go at backpack, we can see all of the upgrades in JI here. The one that chat wants us to get is the feeding upgrade, which feeds the player with food from the backpack's inventory automatically. If we can get this and put it into the upgrade slot in our backpack, we can then just dump cooked apples into the backpack and I will automatically be fed continuously whenever it's needed and I won't have to get shouted at to, to eat over and over and over again. So to make this, it's a little pricey. It does require one ender pearl and then a glistering melon slice, a golden carrot, and a golden apple. So the golden apple, we can make. That's easy enough. The carrot, we can't make just yet because we don't have a carrot or enough nuggets. And then the melon, we also can't make just yet because, again, we don't have the melon slice. And so um, we might take a bit of a detour here away from power production. Let me quickly grab the uranium. And let me quickly get these thrown down and then we'll, we'll quickly detour into, uh, into getting the auto food up and running and then we'll come back to this lava power in, uh, in a minute. So I think for now, we'll just do like this, this, and this. We'll put the crucibles down uh, here, here, and here. We will of course disconnect that connection right there uh, and then we'll have like our dynamo down here and maybe like an energy cell potentially uh, to kind of buffer our power generation but uh, essentially chat if we are going to get carrots and melon seeds i'm fairly certain that we can get both of those in seed form by sifting grass oh we can't okay so melon seeds you can get from sifting grass so grass in a regular sieve uh, we can get melon seeds there's a one in ten chance so we need approximately 10 grass to make that work. Thankfully, grass is fairly easy for us to get. So uh, over here, we have seagrass, which we've been generating using the survivalist strainer. So uh, we take this. If we drop this into the water, that should turn into regular grass. It does, perfect. And then from there, we can craft that up with dirt, I believe, which we do have 107 of, like so. And that gets us grass. Nice. We can then uh, quickly steal the diamond mesh from our heavy sieve, drop that into the regular sieve. And then if we uh, go ahead and sift this grass here, 
each time we should have a 1 in 10 chance of getting some melon seeds. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we got any uh, melon seeds there, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, the good news is, though, of course, that we do have yet more seagrass in our strainer here, so we can get more regular grass and uh, sift that as well. So this time around, we did get melon seeds, which is perfect. Uh, as far as carrot seeds go, these seem a little trickier. For these, we have to drop bamboo into organic water. So the bamboo, how in the world are we going to get that? I think there's actually a quest line for this exact chain of command. There is. So uh, the carrots are on the more seeds quest line. So we have to take our organic water and then bamboo seeds we can make by dropping a melon slice, a wheat seed, and a beetroot seed into organic water. Okay, so let's dump some stuff in here. We do want to keep those melon seeds. Thankfully, we do have bone meal now, uh, and quite a bit of it, so we can probably utilize that to uh, increase the speed at which we, uh, we grow our melon seeds. Before we do that, let's get some more organic water into the smell tray. I'm fairly certain that we should be able to pull that out uh, for use you know, in the, uh, in the world for making carrot seeds. So I'll drop that away. We'll grab one more block of clay, and just like before, we'll also grab two tin ore chunks. And we'll drop those in the smeltering. While we wait for that to smelt up, let's once again get some more tiny coal into that pitiful generator there. Beautiful. And let's grab some more dirt. We're also probably going to want some kind of hoe as well. And I think for now, we'll set up a little bit of a farming area, maybe down here beneath the smeltery. Also, let's turn that off because we don't want all of this um, organic water being pulled out into uh, organic matter. So let's do something like this. And let's get a, uh, a bucket of water into that uh, middle slot there to help us speed up some of the crop growth. I think we'll also fill in these areas as well because if we're gonna try and grow uh, melons, we're going to need a bit more space, right? So if we do something like this and like this, that's gonna begin growing a melon. We can speed that growth up in one of two ways, I think. Of course, the first way, and the most obvious way, is with bone meal. Uh, we can take some of the bone meal that we get from this bone block, and we can use that to grow at least the stem of the, uh, the watermelon. After that, we can also use a watering can for mystical agriculture. I believe that should also increase the speed at which crops grow. And now the basic tier here, this basic watering can, there are multiple tiers of it, uh, I don't think is particularly great. So let's use our bone meal to bone meal this up to fully grown. And then from there, let's use the watering can to see if we can't accelerate the uh, growing of an actual melon. And look at that, boom, perfect, nice. So let's go ahead and grab that guy. So that's the melon slice taken care of. Uh, so we have that. Again, if we want bamboo, we now need a wheat seed and a beetroot seed. So we definitely got a wheat seed when we were sifting. I don't know if we got a beetroot seed. We totally did, nice. So we'll take one of those and we'll take our wheat seed as well. And um, we should probably grow these a few times to try and get some more. Uh, presumably, we'll get more as, as they grow. So boom and boom. This time we can just use our bone meal here to accelerate this process. But there we go, we got extra beets and wheat seeds. Good stuff. So now we just need that uh, bucket of organic water. Now I think, yeah, you can just right click. Oh no, this is not organic water. This is um, overworld matter, that's my bad. Organic, oh, of course I'm a fool. <laughs> organic water is the thing you get by putting the leaves into the smeltery. Overworld matter is what you make with organic water. That is my bad chat. I have uh, conflated organic water with overworld matter. All we need to do is just put leaves directly into the smeltery and each leaf or each leaf gets you 20 millibuckets. So we need 50 leaves in the smell trail, I'll just take a stack here. Uh, that's gonna get us a thousand millibuckets of water, uh, of organic water that we can then pull out and uh, and use to make the bamboo. There we go, one bucket. Again, if we pull that down, uh, you can then just right click on any drain with the bucket and we get the organic water. So let's bring this down to the lower level here. And then for now, let's just do something like this. Uh, we drop in, I believe it was a melon slice, a wheat seed and a beet seed. But just to check, just to confirm that is Indeed the case. Yeah, one melon slice, one wheat seed, and one beetroot seed. So boom, boom, and boom. And there we go. We get some bamboo seeds, which presumably 
we can drop down somewhere around here. I think there's going to be a better spot for it, just like everything else. And then uh, using our bun meal, potentially make that a little taller. Break it with the X. And look at that, we have bamboo. So now we have to do the exact same thing again here. But this time it's just one bamboo into another bucket of organic water and we get the carrot seed. So once again, organic water, this time with one bit of bamboo. And boom, we get carrot seeds. And so I think, chat, that we are finally at the point where we can take that carrot, we can uh, head back to our crafting station, craft down some of our gold ingots into gold nuggets. Let's take 18 of those. Let's make a golden carrot. Let's make a glistening melon. And then let's have a look at backpack. Do we have what it takes to make the feeding upgrade? We do, we're just missing the ender pearl. However, as we've seen before, we can purchase an ender pearl from the store for a total of 15 C-Books, submit and ender pearl, boom, boom, and boom. So now, or you can toggle it on and off as well, that's interesting. Right now, we have about half of our chicken legs uh, at the bottom here. If I drop the cooked apples into my backpack, does that feed me? Look at that. Oh, <laughs> Chet, no longer do you have to shout at me and remind me to eat. The backpack is going to do the job for me. That is, uh, that, that is some future tech right there. Uh, so now I guess we just go and grab some apples out of our... Uh, out of our drawer over here, stick those into the furnace, and maybe at the beginning of each stream, I could just come on and uh, drop a stack of cooked apples into my backpack, and uh, and we should be good to go. So now that that's taken care of, let's pivot back over to this uh, lava production, shall we? So there's actually a few things I do want to do over in this area. Uh, these hoppers are pretty bad at the job that they're trying to do. So right now, uh, things here are backed up, the reason things are backed up is because the chest is backed up. And the reason that chest is backed up is because like these hoppers are backed up as well. Like the chunks can't get into the chest. So I think that we should replace this kind of janky system of wooden hoppers, especially now that we have unlocked the pipes mod. So if we come over to here, I think there's actually a quest line for it as well, just beneath iron sieving. That is next level automation. So this mod adds item pipes, fluid pipes, gas pipes, and energy pipes that I think are going to be pretty good for us. So the item pipes are pretty easy to make. They require uh, basic logistical transporters, lead and redstone. Unfortunately, of all the resources I did prepare before the stream, lead is not one of them. So let's quickly get some lead uh, into the old smeltery here. We can pull that out in block form once it's done. The reason, by the way, that I'm not using the logistical transporters for this is that the mechanism pipes behave in a little bit of a weird way. The mechanism pipes don't check to see if they can send an item to an inventory to see if there's space before they send the item, which is problematic here, right? Because right now, if we, if I tried to replace these wooden hoppers, these ones right here that are taking the chunks from the factories and sending them around to this chest, if I tried to use logistical transporters, these pipes here, for that task, what would happen is the logistical transporter would extract the stack of tin from that factory, send it down, try and put it into this chest. It would then see that the chest is full and then try and send it back to the factory. But by the time it gets back to the factory, the factory would have already made even more chunks. And so the chunks that we were sending back wouldn't be able to go into the factory. And so what we would create is this horrible lag cycle where the iron, where the chunks would just get stuck in the pipe, bouncing backwards and forwards over and over and over again, which ends very badly, especially when you're playing on a server with other people who don't want it to be as laggy as possible. So the benefit of the pipes mod is that the pipes mod will only move items from the factory down into that chest if there's space in the chest, right? The items don't move through the pipes like they do with mechanism. They just go from the factory directly to the chest when there's space, right? At a rate of, I think, about four items per tick, but you can upgrade them uh, to be faster later on down the line. So that's kind of the benefit there. And going forward, certain setups are going to require the use of these kind of pipes instead of using things like the uh, the mechanism pipes. Even though I do love watching items flow through pipes, it's sometimes a lot more uh, efficient and effective to use something like the item pipe here from, from pipes. So let's grab the lead here, which seems to have turned from a, a purple color to a white. I'm not going to question it. And uh, if we head on back 
into our uh, crafting grid. That should be everything that we need to make the pipes. In fact, I think we do have yeah, a bunch of logistical transporters in our backpack. So boom and boom. We will take a few of these. And essentially, if I'm not mistaken, all we should have to do here is get rid of almost all of these wooden hoppers. We are going to leave some of them around. But uh, if we get rid of the ones connected to the, uh, the factories here and we replace those with item pipes like this, and of course run that around to the chest there, what we should then be able to do is set these to extract. And I think to do that, we are going to have to get a wrench from the pipes mod. I think much like the configurator that we were using for the mechanism pipes, if we go to at pipes in JEI, there is a pipe wrench. It's made with two sticks and two flints. Bizarrely, the two sticks are the thing that we're missing there. So if I'm not mistaken, all we have to do is where these connect to the factories, if we just shift right click, those are now set to extract and you'll see it says transferring four items every 20 ticks. So there are 20 ticks per second in Minecraft, there we go, uh, which means basically this is gonna move four items per second, which is not crazy fast. However, if we wanted to, we could upgrade the pipe using uh, the basic improved advanced or ultimate pipe upgrades, uh, which would increase the speed at which the pipe can extract items going forward. For now though, I think that should be okay. To test it, let's go ahead and pull out these stacks here to kind of clear the, uh, the backlog. And we'll of course just dump those into our draw controller. But hopefully we should start to see things moving maybe a bit more smoothly now. Okay, so not too long later, and I think this is working. You'll see the chest is kind of cleared up a little bit, um, but right now it's still pulling out all of these pieces. I'm hopeful that once the pieces are extracted, it'll start moving the chunks. I think the only reason it's not extracting, yeah, the chunks just yet is because it does, it like pulls to the nearest inventory first. So yeah, this seems to be working perfectly. It always sends the pieces to the factory first, which is what caused the backlog the first time. But now because we're not, you know, producing the pieces that fast using the, the auto sieves, they eventually do run out of pieces to send. And then at that point, it starts sending the chunks over to the draw controller. Um, or if we have too many chunks, it sends it right on through to the trash can, which is exactly what we want, right? That's the setup that we're after. So this does appear to be working, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and collect this sieve here and also pick up this water. And then we can also get down our new magmatic dynamo as well. So we'll put this down maybe like here for now. And we want to pipe into the back of this. Now, one benefit of the pipes mod, or one really cool thing the pipes mod adds, is this universal pipe, which I think might not be a bad investment for us. Because basically what I'm thinking right now, Chad, is we've moved our lava generation all the way over to the opposite side of the base from our smeltering, but we do still need to get lava into the smeltery. And also one of the whole reasons for getting this power upgrade is to be able to power our refined storage system without having to continually refill the pitiful generator. So I'm thinking what we might do then is we might invest in some of these universal pipes, which by the way, are item pipes, fluid pipes, and energy pipes all in one. So they can carry all three of those items in one pipe. I'm thinking if we do that, then we can run power and lava from this sphere over through the center sphere to give power to the controller and then all the way along to the smeltery to provide lava to the smeltery. I'm thinking we could maybe run it underneath our current pre-existing cable, right, our current line. Before we get too ahead of ourselves though, let's get some mechanical pipes and let's get those down right about here, like that. Uh, I guess we don't need this one, right? We could also do with some more item pipes. Again, I think using the item pipes instead of the logistical transporters is gonna make more sense for this setup because again, we don't want a crushed netherrack bouncing back and forth in a pipe. Uh, we only want items to be sent to the crucible when there is space in the crucible, right? So let's quickly go and grab um, a few more batches of item cable. So something like this, I think should work. Once again, we'll set this up here to extract. And we should start to see these filling up nice and quickly with netherrack, which is beautiful. Uh, another benefit of these pipes is they do move the items faster because they don't have to simulate the items moving through the pipes as well. And yeah, we should start to see lava being generated in here. From there, we can just go ahead and set these pipes, which need this guy, uh, to extract, extract, and extract. 
and we should be good to go. It also might not be a bad idea for us to look at investing maybe in like a mechanism tank so we could maybe store a buffer of, uh, of lava as well. But that's already full and already producing redstone flux. Again, by default, this can produce up to 40 redstone flux per tick. However, as I mentioned earlier, we can upgrade that if we use some of those uh, integral components. So uh, the first one, fairly easy for us to make. The only thing uh, that we are missing is a gold gear. Now, between streams, when I was processing all of my metals into ingots and blocks, I did contemplate making a few of them into like gears and plates. But I figured now that we have this multi-servo press, we can turn things like gold into gears fairly quickly without having to go through the smelt tray. And so I decided to just smelt everything into ingots. And that way, if we need something like a gold gear, we can just quickly pop to the multi-servo press. I think that's a lot faster and it makes our setup a lot more versatile. So that's done. In terms of the reinforced upgrade, I think we might want to invest in that. Uh, before I do, let me uh, just test this one. And let's also look at grabbing an auxiliary reaction chamber. This increases generation rate, but produces but reduces efficiency. So basically the same thing that we put into our induction smelter, but instead of making the machine faster, it just makes it produce, it makes the dynamo produce more power, right? This again, though, does require signalum. So I think we'll come back to that in just a second. Also, there's our power gone for the, uh, the refined storage system again. Just by putting this in, we go up to 80 redstone flux per tick, which is still less, by the way, than our uh, wind generators. But I think as soon as we get some of these uh, auxiliary reaction chambers in, uh, and if we can upgrade the integral component to reinforced, I think we should st uh, we should soon start to produce um, a few hundred RF per tick, which is going to be much, much nicer. So let's go ahead, chat, and see if we can't make some signalum. Signalum, I believe, is another alloy that's made in the induction smelter. This time, it is silver, copper, and redstone. We don't have that much, but we can get some uh, into the smelter, and we can get started with the two that we have. Let's go and uh, drop those in over there. We'll pull that out in just a second. Copper-wise, I think we are, yeah, nice and stocked up on that. Beautiful. And then redstone-wise, we do have 129 redstone ready to go. So let's go and drop that in over here. So that got us eight signalum, which is actually quite a bit. Let's have a look again at those uh, components. So yeah, in fact, if we just put those eight directly into the multi-servo press, that's going to get us the two signalum gears that we need. And I think we should already have the electrum and the nether quartz. So upgrading to the next tier of, um, of components here should actually be as simple as just grabbing this and grabbing the hardened component from the dynamo. Boom and boom. So now let's see how much redstone flux that is producing. If we put that in, that takes us up to 120. So we've effectively managed to triple our redstone flux per tick here just by throwing in that uh, reinforced component. Let's go see if we can't get some more signalum and make some of those uh, dynamo augments. So there is more signalum and we've also made two silver gears. Uh, now, unfortunately to make this, we do also need hardened glass. Uh, but I don't think that the hardened glass here is too pricey. Yeah, it's not too bad. One uh, quartz, one obsidian, and one sand in the induction smelter will get us two hardened glass. Uh, over here, we do have one obsidian. I think we have maybe 14 more over by our smeltery, where our old obsidian maker used to be. Uh, but for now, if we also take one sand and one nether quartz, Drop those in over here, boom, boom, and boom. And hopefully fairly quickly, now that this is uh, sped up, we get two hot and glass. Nice. So that should be everything, I think, for at least one of these uh, auxiliary reaction chambers. Uh, oh, of course, the signal needs to be in plate form. That is my bad chat. Uh, let us quickly run that through the multi-servo press without the gear working die. I'll put this back in just so I don't forget, but then we could take those signal and plates. And now we actually have everything it takes to make our very first uh, reaction chamber here and you can put really as many of these as you like into the dynamo so long as you have the uh, the upgrade space for them uh, so right now there's only three slots available but if we put one of these in that doubles our redstone flux per tick output from 120 rf per tick up to 240 rf per tick now uh, at the moment of course that power is not going anywhere because the dynamo is not hooked up to anything i think we will look at investing into a line of universal pipes 
this is going to be a little pricey because six universal pipes require two iron ingots, one block of redstone, and then two item energy and fluid pipes. And if we're going to connect from this sphere all the way over to the back of that smeltery, we're going to need quite a few of these. We might not have enough redstone for that, but let's give it a go, shall we? Okay, so how many of these can we make? We can make 18 of these. And the thing we're missing is item pipes, which we can now make more of. We did smelt up some more lead, so we are good to go here. Uh, someone did suggest maybe using universal pipes just to like just to the controller or just to about here and then using just fluid pipes to take it the rest of the way. Uh, we don't necessarily have to have universal pipes all the way through, which is definitely true. Uh, although it would be nice just in case we end up putting machines down over at the other side. But uh, basically, I'm thinking we can use that to extract from there. We can also potentially use it to extract from here if those connect, which it looks like they do. Uh, we don't necessarily have to disconnect this, but just for the sake of appearances, I am going to disconnect that. What we will probably do is we'll probably put down some kind of battery here, uh, maybe an energy cube for a mechanism to uh, kind of buffer the power so that we have power, you know, backing up and ready to go just in case the generator does go down. And I think here we'll have some kind of tank so that we can do the same thing with lava as well. We can have a bit of a buffer just in case our uh, lava production system, for whatever reason, does go down. But uh, from there... I guess we also don't need uh, this pipe either. But uh, from there, we can just run this along up and preferably under this pipe, which is going to be doable, but is going to require some glass breaking because there is currently glass underneath that pipe there. And that is fine because before the stream, I did make some more blast furnaces. Uh, and as we saw earlier, we do have a bunch of glass ready to go for just such an occasion. So I've done the initial line here under you know this connecting bridge. To get the power over to here, though, we are going to have to once again move this. So we're going to have to, like, kind of reroute our logistical transporter. We'll put a universal pipe there for now, and then we'll break this glass and do something like that. Uh, of course, we want that to connect up over with that. And then I guess for now, we'll just do something like this to connect those up. That should be fine. And then just to kind of keep things in check, I guess we'll also kind of try and do it like this to connect that up, but that should, I believe, now pump power directly into the controller without the need for the pitiful generator. Right now that is going down. I think that's because over here we have to actually set the universal pipe to extract like that. So now if we press shift, that can transfer 256 RF per tick which is perfect because right now we're only producing uh, 240 RF in here. So if we were to upgrade this dynamo, uh, we would then have to upgrade. I think all we have to do is upgrade the connection. So I think basically what you do is you grab one of these pipe upgrades and then you just put it onto the bit that it like extracts. I don't think you have to upgrade every single pipe. Let me test that real quick though. I've not actually played with the pipes mod before. If we were to go ahead, craft up some iron nuggets and then craft up a basic pipe upgrade. Can I just right click that onto the bit that extracts? Oh, you can actually view it. Oh, look at that, interesting. Oh, so you have to upgrade each bit individually. Oh, so down here in energy, if we put this upgrade here, you'll see in the top left there, now this is transferring 1024 FE every tick. But it does work, I believe, like I said, I think now that can pull 1024 out and can send 1024 to any other system. Interesting though, that you have to upgrade each one individually. And I believe as you add more upgrades, so as you you know move on to the improved, the advanced and the ultimate, you unlock some more of these features like the ability to whitelist items in the item pipe, uh, the ability to uh, change the way the pipe works in terms of like sending fluids to different inventories at the same time uh, or sending it to the nearest inventory first, stuff like that uh, with this button here. Again, that's all stuff we'll work on in the future. For now, if we go and check, I think that our controller should be re uh, receiving power. It is. Look at that. It's almost locked at uh, 32,000 redstone flux. And so now going forward, we shouldn't really have to worry too much about power for our refined storage system. It should just continually stay online due to the fact that we have power being produced from our lava. Also, people have pointed out that I was incorrect there. It looks like all of you don't have to upgrade uh, each slot individually this is in all of the slots so you actually just have to put the upgrade in uh, once and as you can see in the top there uh, it's actually up to all those numbers so uh, unlike up here where we're only extracting 
uh, four items every 20 ticks. Down here, it's uh, eight items every 15 ticks. So uh, just the one upgrade for the pipe there. And that does work. So now all we have to do is get a fluid pipe over to the smeltery. Okay, so I've run these fluid pipes from the seared tank that holds our lava for our smeltery over to here. Unfortunately, these don't connect, so you can't connect a universal pipe to a fluid pipe. However, uh, presumably what we can do here is grab one of those mechanism tanks that I mentioned earlier, and we can kind of put one of those down as a buffer. And in fact, I'll grab two of these. I think I would still like to have one as a buffer over by where the lava is generated, and then maybe another one, like right here. Uh, that way the lava can go in here once we set it to extract on the other side, and then here we'll set it to extract as well, and that should pull it over into the smeltery. So let's head on back over here. If we drop down another tank, let's say right about here, that should fill with lava. We'll then set this to extract. That should pull the lava out slowly but surely, and I've actually set things up in such a way here that I actually can't get to the other side uh, to pick up that pipe, which is uh, somewhat problematic. We could definitely do with uh, tweaking this room's setup so I can actually get around. But uh, nevertheless, for now, if we go and check, we should see this tank over here. Look, that's filling with lava. And then from there, I think I do need to move this seared tank. Yeah, because I've connected the pipe up to the center. Like, it's right there. So if we just move this to the middle... Like that, we should also, once again, have unlimited lava being pumped around into our smeltery, uh, whilst at the same time having unlimited lava connected up to our magmatic dynamo as well. So this seems to be working perfectly well. It's doing a good job. It's not producing a ton of RF because the RF is uh, currently not needed for, uh, for too much there. Um, of course, what we'll probably try and do, uh, maybe in the next stream, is grab an energy cube, one of these guys right here. To do that, we are going to have to make a, a metallurgic infuser. Thankfully, this does not require a steel casing, which a lot of the other machines from Mechanism do require, uh, because this, uh, we don't quite have what it takes to make. We need steel, uh, which in fact, I think we can make with the metallurgic infuser. But uh, we'll come back, we'll make one of these. We will get an energy cube. We can add that down as a buffer. And then we could probably route all of our power, so like our wind turbines, to that energy cube and then just pull the energy out of the energy cube. Uh, therefore, all of the power does go through that energy cube so we can tell you know much more easily when we're starting to run out of power or when we don't have enough power uh, to run everything in the base. Uh, let me also quickly see how we're doing on netherrack because it's quite possible that we might start to run out. It looks like we're doing okay. I think I'd imagine that we're probably generating the netherrack here faster than we're using it to produce lava, especially given that we're not really using the lava that much at the moment because we're not using anywhere near the maximum uh, power output of the magmatic dynamo. In the future, as we add more machines and as we start to use more of this power, we might start to run low on uh, on netherrack, but at that point, we can always just increase the amount of netherrack that we're producing fairly easily with another block breaker or maybe with something like the Ignis Extruder um, as well. But uh, I think, chat, that is probably going to do it for today. Next time, I do want to come back. I want to set up the energy cube. I'd also love to start looking at automating the production of overworld matter, which I think we can do using some auto crafting from refined storage. I think that should be fairly easy for us to work with. And on top of that, I'd also like to start looking at processing the chunks that we're going to get. Because of course, if we can auto produce overworld matter, we could then start to auto sift the overworld matter. Uh, and then we'd start getting, you know, iron chunks, gold chunks, silver chunks, lead chunks, all of the other chunks like that we're getting with copper, nickel, and tin, we'd get those for all the other materials and they'd start backing up in here. And from there, I'd love to start making probably something like a pulverizer from thermal expansion. Uh, that would allow us to process these chunks here into dust. And then from there, we could get something like a redstone furnace, which is another machine uh, from thermal expansion to smelt that dust into ingots to then automatically have the ingots pumped around into our drawers here so that we don't have to keep taking chunks, putting them into the smeltery and waiting for them to smelt that way. I feel like that's going to be a big help for us moving forward as we start to, uh, you know, craft more and more. We don't want to have to keep going uh, to the smeltery every single time we need new ingots. It's very slow and very tedious. So hopefully that's something that we can get set up sooner rather than later. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.